Yesterday you were in the red state. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I'm all okay. Oh, right, 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 right. Are you being safe? Are you being careful? Huh? Are you being safe? Are you being careful? I am definitely doing that. Thank you for for uh, for asking. It's definitely. In that uh, I'm done. Want you to wear no mask? Oh hmm. my God. No, no, I'm wearing well, that mask. I'm at, home. I'm at home, and normally I'd have mine on, but when I'm in my house, <laughs> <laughs> I, hey, you know, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, you're looking, you're looking. I, I must say, and I, I have to just say this out of uh, pure respect. You are looking uh, very, very healthy and positive to me right now you know you look good i am very excited mm. about the future you know i hope that everyone does go, go out and vote vote in positive and vote out negative just that That's simple right. yeah because okay. um tough times well, you know, We'll get into that. Well, you know what? It's reality time. I think that in one sense, this whole COVID thing has uh, forced people to stop, look, and listen. Listen to your heart and what it's saying. Stop, mm. look. Come on, man. You know, you know. Uh, <laughs> but look, but look, I got to ask you, you know, this is, this is, uh, this is Harlem week. This is, a I do know. For, and you know, I still, I'm in the red right now, but I, but believe it or not, I still live in Harlem still to this day. I still live in Harlem. I love it. I love it. I, I can't remember the first time that I went to, uh, to the Apollo. Oh man. You got to tell the story. Tell me that story, man. <laughs> Look, I was like, okay, first of all, being on the Motown tour, me being allowed mm -hmm. to, to leave school and be on the Motown tour with all the big stars, I was like, right. amazing. And um, I remember the... Um, was Barry Gordy, and there was my music director, uh, Clarence Pa, and there was Bob, was his, Bob Schiffer was his name? But the owner of the uh, Apollo. And so they were all on stage, and we were doing like the sound check. It was called rehearsal back then. And, right. uh, <clears throat> So, you know, here's this nervous kid of like 12 years or whatever. And I had these little bongos between my legs. I was playing, but I was so nervous. I was like dropping the bongos on the floor. Like, what the hell? You know. <laughs> <laughs> and you got the guy say, hey, let get him to look more to the left. Stevie, you know, all that. <laughs> like, hold on, hold on, hold on. But you was nervous because you was at the Apollo more than likely, right? But that was what why well, you were nervous. I mean, or that, was, that, that was major. I mean, I, obviously, I was at you know the the place that all the big stars came. The Mecca, the Mecca. You know, all the the stories of Ella Fitzgerald being there, Sarah Vaughn, Duke Ellington, on and on and on, mm -hmm. and uh, Jackie Wilson. 
Cooks and obviously all the different stars and Sam Cook and oh my God, forget about it. And I'm like, Man. I'm a Dumbella. And <laughs> it was an amazing thing. Uh, an amazing thing. And so anyway, getting back to my situation, my situation. Yeah, 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 yeah. Break it down, break it down. So yeah. I was like nervous because it was saying, come on, oh, turn your head this way. It's like, turn your head this way. No, I'm gonna do my this. Sing more with the voice. Do more. I'm like, you know, in my mind, I'm like saying, this guy needs to really sit down and leave me alone, really, for real. Exactly, exactly. Great I'm gonna say something like that. And so finally, um, we you know got the show together, did whatever, and um, Clarence Paul, my music director, figured out the way how I was going to walk on stage and all that, with me holding his arm because I, as well, I had my my well my tut my tutor hadn't come on the road with me, with me yet, Ted Hall, but. Everyone said, well, you know, you got to let a blind person hold your elbow and you let him walk in back of you. <laughs> and it was all that kind of stuff. So that was sort of the back stage happening of all that. And obviously everybody right. who was older than 13, okay, were my parents. All the different artists, the Marvelettes, the Primes, you know, all the different stars, okay? Right, right. You know, Diane Ross, so I was like, I'm having a crush with her voice. I'm like, you're trying to tell oh me what's candy. I'm like, exactly. Anyway, so exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, this is so real. This is the realest. Give it to me. Go, go, go. <laughs> so anyway, so we... Uh, we, uh, you know, they were like my parents. So I, I, you know, I was always, you know, whether whether it be Esther Gordy Edwards, or Ardina Johnson, who was my chaperone, or when Ted came on board, or Clarence Paul. All these people were my parents. Okay, mm -hmm. and they said, "Lula," my mother was her name was Lula. Lula, you don't worry about you. Get no trouble. He don't get no trouble. No trouble. He don't get no trouble. Okay. Right. Stevie going to go to bed, and after he got off stage, he's taking his ass right to bed, okay? Because <laughs> you was 13, but you was in New York. I know you wanted to get apartment. No, I, I was 12. I, no, I, I know 12. you. You was 12? I was, I was 12. But, oh, wow. you know, the moment that I hit 13, and that was when fingertips came out, and they were saying, well, this is 12-year-old genius. I'm like, I'm 13. What are you talking about? <laughs> That's right. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Hey, 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 so, hey, hold on, hold on, hold on. Before you finish, now, well, go ahead. No, finish because I want to say something about fingertips because I, I studied that and I'm gonna tell you something interesting about that because that was crazy. That right there was crazy how that happened. You know what I mean? I think I talked to you about that before. You could tell that that God was involved with that because, I mean, it was spiritual. It was spiritual. It was just something that spontaneously, you didn't plan on doing let that, me, did you? Let, well, no, but let me, that, that actually we did that recording that you're talking about. It wasn't the Apollo. Just okay. so y'all know, you know, so y'all may have thought it was the Apollo. It was not the Apollo, okay? It was the Regal Theater, Chicago. Oh, okay. But y'all okay. you know, can keep lying if you want to. But anyway, um, so... The thing about the Apollo again was okay. So then, just to talk about a few things, kind of connected to what we've been dealing with in the last few years. Mm -hmm. um, that is even make what's happening right now uh, in this nation even more sickening. Mm. So I remember being invited to come to be at the Apollo. Uh, for the special benefit performances that we're going to do to raise money for the March on Washington. Right. So it was to get, you know, help to raise monies that will be used for the March on Washington by Dr. King. Wow. wow. I was 13 years old. Mm. Uh, 14, well, going on 14. And um, I was able to meet for the first time 
Joanne Woodward and Paul Newman, young as they were. Mm. But the amazing thing is they were there to give me my Billboard Award for having the number one record and album mm. on their charts. So, you know, amazing. They too were there as mm. members of those that were committed to fighting against racial injustice. Wow, it sounds familiar. This is 2000, the same thing's happening. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The thing about it is, um, I, I say to the older people, to the old people, I mean, you're kind of a little older now, uh, Dougie, me, you know, but the point is, mm -hmm. to, the, to the generations, two, three, four years, or generations back, you know, it's very important that we allow the vigor and commitment that young people have in wanting to see this that never ever made sense anyway. Stop. Right. Just stop. Just cut. Like the film, cut. Okay. Cut. Because, That's right. Uh, uh, having injustice for anybody or anybody's actually means injustice to yourself, whatever I ethnicity agree. you might be. So um, I remember that. And obviously between the time that I was first at the Apollo and I was telling you about that whole experience and then coming back again, the Motown tour was going on and there mm -hmm. were things that were happening. And so I would, from Detroit, hear about, oh, you know, our bus almost got shot. The gas tank was almost hit by a bullet because uh, they didn't want black people there, and so they were gonna do that. And so the bullet uh, was in the, uh, the uh, actual bus, uh, they were half an enemy from the tank. And um, mm -hmm. yeah, so the thing about it is, um, mm -hmm. the one thing that's kept everyone kind of together uh, which is something that I truly do cherish, and I thank God for, um, the gift of music. Right. Uh, of, all, of all the things that I could have been given as something to enjoy and not be hung up in the whole idea of being blind was being able to have the gift of music of sound, of curiosity, the sounds that I heard. And so right. you know, I'm as excited today as I was when I was uh, 12. Boy. Yeah. Because again, it's, it's still about discovery. You know, when I play this instrument, So you know I understand. Don't worry about don't worry about the delay. You gotta get with the delay. See if you can do while the delay's going. On. One, two, three, three, four. Hey man, I can rock off of a delay. You know what I mean? I, I can rock off a of delay. Some people say perfect pitch. I got perfect rhythm. I'll find mm -hmm. the rhythm. 
I'll speaking find. Of rhythm, speaking of rhythm, where are you with everything that's going on? Oh man, the rhythm. Well, I mean, for me, I just wanted. I want to say this to you that that it's funny what you're saying about your story because uh, I feel very inspired. I feel I feel that the creator is sending me messages on what to do and what to say and what to be a part of. So through this whole thing, I made different songs about people, you know, washing their hands because COVID-19 has been so so unbelievable and it's been it's been impacting so many people's lives and it's been hurting our communities in such a way. So I went and, and, you know, and I was inspired spiritually. Something told me to make a song about it. And then Governor Cuomo loved the song so much that he uh, he said the Latin community, the numbers went up in that community. So I made a Latin version of it. And then after that, I did another song about people wearing their mask. And I feel going into the point that you were saying about music, I feel that God has given us this gift to be able to use to enlighten people, educate them, sometimes give them a new direction or maybe see a direction that they didn't see. And you have been a major part of that particular light. Like, uh, you know, out of all the artists that have been out, you know, you have always been at the forefront of making music that have given messages and direction and and it has always inspired me even though hip hop is my base everything that that have been created has come from the creator so as much as i'm hearing these songs like for example you know it's a song that you made that i don't even know this is one of the songs that played a major role in hip hop because you know i grew up in harlem i live two blocks away from the apollo but I remember when I heard this song from you. Check this out. You see what I mean? I mean, that, just that bass line is telling me the story. I can hear, I can hear everything. See, what you did here, it made us say, we can't use this gift foolishly. We have to use this gift wisely. Check this out. That's what yeah. I get. Okay. Turn, turn, off, turn, off, turn him off. Yeah, 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 yeah. I just wanted to play that bass line. And, I but mean, look, I'm telling you. On a Saturday night, on a rainy Saturday night, I wrote that song in New York. Wow. That's crazy, man. I'm telling you. Yo, I'm telling you, Steve, that bass line. And I know you don't believe me, and I'm not, I know you don't like playing your records like that, but I'm just saying, even without your words, this bass line, just that, just that is telling me everything. Because I know, I listen to sound. Sound, I see colors. I can feel what come from that sound. That bass line alone captured everything, your words, complimented the baseline but before you even said the words i knew what you was I, I knew what was saying you know what i mean like i knew what you were saying so i'm just saying that to tell you that this is your part of the reason on you know the messages that come through you from the creator and the messages that i received from you is what inspired me to continue to do what i'm doing so so I think I think I'm I'm on the right rhythm. I know I'm on the right rhythm. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's powerful, man. Well, speaking of rhythm, again, I think that everybody's got to be on the same beat. That's right. The same rhythm, and the rhythm is the drum that is moving us to move forward which means that everybody has got to vote for real. Like it's your life. Mm -hmm. For your life. That's right. For real. Vote. For life. In and negative. Ouch. 
out. That's right. By the way, please tell Governor Cuomo that really I'm a fan. Mm. Um, I really enjoyed the way he connected the, connected the dots that were left completely disconnected. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. Speaking of, of music, uh, so I'm working on this song. I'm going to have to text you or call you or whatever because I ain't going to text it to you. It's too good. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I'm yeah. excited about it. And <clears throat> maybe you can, like, you know, bust a couple of things on it. You know, you know, you know, I, you, you know, is you know, I you always got something. You know, I got it. I got it. I got it's it. Not thinking of your mind now. Yeah, yeah, See, yeah. Dougie's gonna do his most incredible. Just keep saying that to yourself over and over again. Right. Because right. that's what I'm right. Thinking. So, but let me ask you, what inspired? What inspired? What it is that you feel? good about now like what what inspired you to create that like where do you get your inspiration you know god is my inspiration um uh, my believing uh in there being a better tomorrow uh knowing that you know these are just wake up calls and these are times where people have to make that decision. Right. Um, you know, you want to live and have and build a world of confusion and distractions and foolishness. Now, I'm not saying you can't have fun. We can't have fun. We all love having fun. Yeah. But some things get kind of stuck on stupid. That's right. And I just think that we have to remember that, you know, the universe is watching us. Mm -hmm. And um, like Spike says, do the right thing. Do the right thing. That's the, the word. Point. Yeah. It's really not complicated, really. Yeah. You know, it actually, uh, it takes less energy to do good than it does to be to do bad. I know? agree. Yeah. And so as the congressman left us with a great responsibility and uh you know get in some good trouble. That's right. That's yeah. right. <laughs> and I, I just think we have to do that. I think that um for those who say, well, look, I'm going to stay home. I'm not going to vote for nobody. Mm. Well, that's a vote for keeping things the way they are. That's that, right. What that is. You're doing nothing is doing exactly something like what the not so good would like for you to do. Exactly. You know, you can't say, you know what, I'm so sick and tired of being tired. So sick and tired of being sick and tired. Right. And you get us being sick and tired of you being sick and tired, which then we don't move forward. And right. that's everyone. That's not just um, African American. And it's everybody. It's everybody. everybody. Of every ethnicity. You can't say you get it. But at the time where it really counts in your head, you're saying, forget it. Yeah. That work. So I just hope that everyone does do uh, what they need to do so that we can change the scenario. But let me, but let me, but let me ask you this though, too. So as you saying that, do you, like, I know COVID-19 and all of this other stuff has happened. Have, have anybody close to you or have, how have that, how have the COVID-19 affected, um, you know, life for you or the, or the people around you? Cause it, it did, it doesn't discriminate and it doesn't matter who, who you are or where you are. 
I'm just looking at the impact that it's having on the world. Have it have it affected you in a, in a way to where you had anybody close to you or something like that? Uh, yes, I've had um, um, members of my some members of my family mm-hmm. that have gotten Sorry, you know, very ill, uh, very sick. And my wife's mother who raised her, unfortunately, passed away. Um, uh, and so, yeah, I, yeah, I mean, I'm affected by everyone, everyone being affected, whether they be right. a family member or my united family, wherever in the world. So, yeah, I I hurt for everyone uh, to know right. that we're towards getting towards the one hundred one hundred and eighty thousand people that have died and unbelievable. You know, it's just unacceptable. And uh it is not supposed to be the way it is. Right. You know. But you know, um so some, you know, as uh former former first lady um, Michelle Obama said, um, we're in the situation and we got to deal with it, you know, by all yeah. means necessary that are right, not trying to do anything illegal, not trying right. to, you know, uh, <clears throat> deny people from having the, the very right that we, you know, fight for the right to vote by creating these different crazy things that are not true, uh, putting people in fear. I have a song that talks about, you know, we can't let fear put our dreams to sleep. And we can't. So, you know, whatever has to happen, whatever we got to do as the artist community, all of us, yeah, we make sure that the post office workers get whatever they need, even if we got to put some things down economically, financially, right. whatever. But people have to vote, and it means if it means you're voting by mail, then you do that, and no one should block that. That's right. No one should block it. He, they trying though. They're doing a, a lot of little. You feel a little um, tri- trickiness coming in there, you know. They need to dump that concept. That's right. Out of all the years, out of all the years that you've been performing and doing things like like this, and and your energy, because you've been feeling the energy for so long, and you talked about Motown and coming from that town, or coming from then all the way till now. Have you ever seen any movement like Black Lives Matter, meaning the the generation of the of the youth and and even you know white people protesting with black people for Black Lives Matter? Have you ever seen anything like this in the in in your in your journey? Because you've seen so much. Have you have anything ever like this happen in in the country from your viewpoint? Well, I think we have, you know, fortunately, uh, social media has been so significant in allowing people to get information just like that. So that's a good mm-hmm. thing. Uh, yeah. The movement um, is calling not only this nation, but the world to, and to understand that systemic racism began from the very moment that those Africans got off those ships. Yes, that's right. And so, you know, listen, for me, I believe that once we get beyond this situation, 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 <laughs> situation. Situation. Okay. <laughs> once we get beyond that, I really believe America needs to have very similar like, to what uh Bishop Tutu did in South Africa is have not just one year, but have three years of atonement 
for mm. real. Like really people need to come together and deal with all this book ish that That's we've been right. dealing with for all these years and get it straight. Because you know what? It's up to us. That's right. It's up to every single American, wherever you may be from, uh, that you've ended up here. And really the world, the whole world needs to have an atonement with itself and get it right. Because you can't say that you believe in the most high and do the most low. Mm -hmm. Man, man, I think I'm gonna write that down. <laughs> I'm gonna write. Don't you down. take my things? Don't you take I'm my sorry. things? I'm gonna give. I'm gonna give you. I'm gonna give you some publishing on it though. So don't worry about it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you can't drop lyrics like that around a rap around an MC a rap. You can't do that. You know that. You know that. Look, look I owe you forever. You know with what you did on. If your love cannot be moved, you know. I oh thank my you. God. Oh my God. I'm telling you, I, 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 I hear, I don't know, for some reason, you know, spiritually, I just hear, I don't just hear words. I hear the sounds. I see them in colors. And, you know, and I was just honored that you asked me to come on there. And then you left me in the studio. You said, look, I'm a, you, said, you played a couple of records and you said, you pick which one you like and do do what you do. And do what you do. <laughs> you my thing. Do what you do. Hey, that was crazy. And I was sitting there going, okay. And then, and you know what's funny too? Because I look at what I do as 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 an instrument. Like I play an instrument. I know what I'm playing. And I don't think I ever even told you how how I created the beatbox. You know, I used to play the trumpet. I used to play the trumpet. And Are you Spike, that? yeah, and Spike Lee's uncle was my music teacher, and I didn't even know about Spike Lee at the time. And what happened is a music program got cut in my school because I was going to school in Harlem and they cut the music program. And when I first met the music teacher, I told him, he said, he said, young man, what instrument do you want to play? I said, I want to play the drums and the percussions. He said, no, you play the trumpet. I said, well, why you ask me, Brother Lee? So Brother Lee said, take the trumpet home, and if you learn to play the trumpet, I'll let you play the drums and the percussions. So long story short, I took the trumpet home every day. And you know, doing that mouthpiece, you know, you get real good at like doing that little exercise. So I okay. brought the trumpet. Yeah, 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 yeah. I brought the trumpet back. And when I brought it back, Spike, uh, um, uh, Brother Lee wasn't in the school no more because they cut the music programs. So then what happened is on 125th Street, you walk where Apollo is, you walk down 125th Street and they have speakers outside of all of the record shops. You remember that? Back in the days, you ride down the street, you hear all the music. So every day I started walking down the street, listening to the music, and I started to play it with my voice because I, I no longer had the trumpet. And then all of a sudden, I kept getting better and better and better at it. And one day when I was practicing, I started doing it in between the practice. And everybody came in the room and said, yo, man, who played that beat? What was that beat right there? Who the? And they said, yo, that wasn't no beat. That was him. That was Dougie. And then after that. Six minutes. Six that, minutes. That's six it. That's six minutes, it. Thank you, man. And look, look, that's the beginning. That's the beginning. And, and then from there. I made the beatbox, so I so I came up with this thing that I say. I say, we the willing, led by the unknowing, are doing the impossible for the ungrateful. We have done so much for so long with so little that we are now qualified to do anything with nothing. And that's how the beatbox got created. Wow. I ain't never tell you that. I didn't never tell you that, but that's how it got created. And when you called me to do Aisha's birthday party, that was in 85 and we was in Jersey, I think or something. And right. I came over there, I came over there and we was doing, yo, you you, you was doing six minutes with me. Right. <laughs> yeah, man, you know, so. So you know what, thing. can I just say one thing before we go? Yeah. Okay. So um, I want 
the two of you ought to get together again and do something, I mean, major to yeah. inspire young people, to bring yeah. them into some wisdom, some knowledge, the wisdom that you know, the knowledge you can share. Right. You know? Yeah. Uh, I mean, I don't know what Slick Rick is doing now. No, no, I just spoke to him, uh, his wife, and, and we're getting ready to do something together no, 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 no. again. No, hold on. Don't be getting a vendor. Come on. I want I want I want I want to I want to hear that, you know, be able for, for my kids to be able to play it, you know, for Christmas time, for Kwanzaa right. time. Of you course. Know, because uh there's an urgency. Um uh for people to uh, like, uh, you know, how what was one thing and turned into another thing, which is like, where's the prosecution? Mm. You know, right, 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 right. So, you know, because there's still things happening that are out there that have not been resolved. And I think that, you know, if we're going to say, I get it, I know what you mean. Mm -hmm. I know why you take a knee, all that. That's great. Now, I want to see you know it so much that not only do you join, but you turn your words into action. Right. And I'm saying that to every person, uh, every person who has the responsibility politically in certain positions. I don't care what side of the aisle you might be on. Mm -hmm. You know, we all know right and we all know wrong. And, um, you know, I don't yeah. want to keep saying you haven't done nothing. I don't want to do that. Oh, man. You see, I said it too. You see, I said it too. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but but I got to ask you this. I got to ask you this because you do so, you you. Like you listen to everything because I play a hip hop beat, you rock off of that. We did something in DC, you rocked off a of go go. You don't, it doesn't matter. You do reggae, hip hop. Like, how is it that you learn how to embrace all forms of music like that? What is the, you, how did you learn how to do that or, or not even learn? What is it? What is it? I'm a music lover, I love music. Okay. So there you go. I mean, I love all kinds of music, whether it be classical, whether it be gospel, whether it be hip hop, whether it be go go, whether it be country, whether it be blues, mm -hmm. you know, whether it be some of the newer forms, you know. A good song is a good song. Uh. Come on. You get me tired again. This guy's crazy. <laughs> hey, look, hey, look, 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 but look, look at this. Where were you when you heard this one here? Remember that, remember that, remember that. Wasn't that released in 1957? That's huh? crazy, huh? We say, wasn't that released in '67 or something like that? I believe so. I believe so. I believe so. That's crazy. How did you feel when that one dropped? What did you feel? Cause you're a music lover, you know. How 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 was that for you when you heard that one? It was a bold truth, a bold, a bold truth. Mm. It was wonderful. To hear it, and it wasn't, and it wasn't, it wasn't easy to say stuff like that back then either, right? Because there was always, whenever you were being uh, your unapolog unapologetic self, it seemed like there was always some pushback. Am I am I correct? Back in those days, 
Well, I didn't get no pushback. <laughs> I, was a, I, was, I was the boss. Right, right, right. I mean, I know that, of course, but <laughs> maybe there might be somebody that might say, oh, how long? come on, it's kinda it's kinda I'll say, yeah, and <laughs> it's true. I so it was one and um yeah, I, I remember hearing that I was performing. I heard it on a Friday night. I was at this club uh in Houston. And they played on the radio. Mm. That's crazy. Your memory is crazy. You said I was in a club in Houston. <laughs> mm. That's crazy right there. Well, look, I'm not going to keep you because we yeah. can go on all day with this, but, uh, um, I want to just say happy Harlem week to, to everyone. Thank you for allowing me to be a part of the celebration. Mm. And Dougie, thank you for yeah. inviting me to be with you. And um, what? I look forward to you hearing my song. You're going to have to come out here, put on your mask, <laughs> you come out, put on a you know, jacket, the rain, whatever you got to do. <laughs> I guess I can. What I'll do is I'll send you a thing. I'll send you uh, what do you call it, Femi? Uh, MP3 file, right? So you know, send okay. it. Okay. Yeah, and you can put your little voice on there. You know. You know, I got it. And Morski and your boy Morski, we are always in contact. So you know, that's your that's your ride or die right there. He ain't even heard. He hasn't even heard it yet. Oh, he didn't hear it. Oh, okay. okay. Let me tell you something. I said, I I love Gogo so much. And, uh, you know, Tamika's, a, you know, she's DC, DC, so there you go. Hey, come on, I baby. You know I know DC. You know I know DC. Such, know a, big, DC. such <laughs> a big DC family, you know. God uh, bless DC. God bless DC. But, uh, yeah. So, I... um. I um so I was listening to Chuck Brown. Mm-hmm. And you know, and also I was I was listening to doing the butt uh uh sack sack. Yeah. Bang, bang. That's right, that's right. So I was listening and I just you know I had this song that I had kind of messed with a little bit, but you know, I always have songs in my head that I may have written a couple of months ago, a couple of years ago, a couple of decades ago, it doesn't matter. But I always remember them. A lot of them, you know, I haven't recorded, but obviously a song is a blessing from God. So, you know, it's like your children. And, um, you know, they're born, they're just, just waiting to come to the world to spread some inspiration, spread some love. Mm -hmm. And so this uh, particular song, I took it and I was thinking of it, you know, you know I thought about doing a go-go go -go beat to it. I, and, I, and let me stop you. When we was in D.C., I told you you needed to do to get with the go-go beat. So I'm going to tell you, big respect to your, to, to you know, to the special lady who, who from D.C. who's been telling you because that go-go is you. Especially let me, now. Let me just tell you something. I'm just keeping it real. I, I, I that's why I said what I said. So, <laughs> the thing is, I went to this club one time. Well, I've been a couple of times in DC. And it's like, oh my God, I'm like, forget about it, you know? Right, 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 right. Like, the group was so, it, it, it's so, it was so African, that's you know? Right. So, that's it. So, so, um, sort of West African kind of mm. thing and um it's it, it was just amazing right. so i'm excited i'm excited with um you know where god gave me the motivation lyrically to write about something that you know that will be you know in the spirit of goodness an anthem Right. So, 
Yeah. <laughs> do you write? Do you write? Do you write every day? Do you write every day? You know, between playing the piano and playing in the harpeggi, I, I write a lot. Is it like is it like natural, or do you just do you do it as an exercise, or do you just do it because this is what you do, and you've been doing this since you was, you know, very very small. You know, what is it? I do it because I love it. Mm. Uh, you know, I just do it because I love it. You know, so what you about what about all of the the distractions though? I mean, do it ever does do the distractions ever? throw you off no maybe what happens is i go into my music when i feel there's so much going on mm. like i remember once when um i was in detroit when i was still living and my, at my mother's and i was on the road and i heard that she had to be rushed to the hospital so i got you know came back to detroit and it was myself and uh, Sarita, my first wife, Sarita. We weren't married then. But it was Sarita and myself. We were downstairs. And I was, you because know, my mother had was in the hospital. But they said, she's coming back. She's OK. But just the whole fact that she was in the hospital when I was freaked out. And I started writing this song here. I'm going to play a little bit of it and see. Um, So I wrote mm. that that was my, I had the melody. I think the melody, only I had was ribbon in the sky for love. Wow. Yeah. What, and that was when your mother was in the hospital. Mm hmm Wow. Yeah. Anyway, I'm telling you too much stuff. Yeah, wow. I know, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Well, before you go, I just want you to know one thing. You understand what I'm saying? Ladies and gentlemen, I'm here with the one and only Stevie Wonder. And I want y'all to know that outside of this being a serious spiritual conversation and a celebration across the nation, this is for yeah. all the week. And this is how we turn it up. Stevie Wonder is in the house. Doug Fresh is in the house. And Come this on. is how we turn it out. Hey, go, go is what it's all about. Here we go, yeah. baby. Yeah. Amen. Oh, we oh. Whoa, whoa. Yeah, man. I just wanted to leave you there, man. <laughs> thank you, man. Always, brother. I appreciate you so much, man. And thank you. Thank you for doing this. This is uh yeah. this is this is, you know, my relationship with you. I, I, I always thank the creator for it because I know that it's it's special. And I know that it is something that, um, you know, it, it continues to grow. And and I'm here whenever you need me. And I've always seen you as there whenever I need you. And that's the kind of relationship that we've had since day one. So just thank yeah. you. And 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 this is where it's at, man. And God bless you and your family. You look good. You. Yeah. I was gonna say, uh, you know, I remember when, uh, you know, the kids said what they you know, who they wanted to have come. It was you and Kumo D, right? Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. Yeah. And uh Yolanda said, it wants somebody named Dougie Fresh and Kumo D. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know mom. Um that's what the kids yeah. said, you don't know. Mom. So then uh, you know, Yolanda said, but let's just get try to get them to come, you know, reached out and there you you know you came and it was, you all both came and it was incredible yeah, whenever enjoyed. you call whenever you call brother you know you have done so much for us and so much for the world and i'm just i'm just so happy to see you so healthy i mean you look good you look good 
and you sound good. And I'm just so happy to see you because uh, you scared me for a minute. I'm not going to lie. You did. But you look very, very good. And you sound unbelievable. We got you know, work God to do. So much, God, I was going to say to you, God has so much for us to do. You yeah. know, we're in a, not only is this pandemic happening, but there's spiritual war that's going on right now. But guess who's going to win the battle? All of us who know that right is right and wrong will forever be wrong. That's right. And you know what? Wrong can ever with right. That's right. That's right. That's right. So on that note, I'm going to let you have a wonderful night. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Enjoy, enjoy. Thank you, family. Yeah, and tell and tell and tell and tell the second half I said love and blessings and yeah. always DC is in the house. Say what y'all <laughs> turning it out. I'll call you. All right. I'll see you All later. Right. All right. All right. I'm listening.